Welcome coders to the new course of SQL that is structured query language and we will cover all SQL topics from basic beginner level to the advanced level and we will also perform and do practicals simultaneously so that uh, we can also learn the method to implement our skill and knowledge in the real time projects and obviously we will cover and do case study questions as well for the real time projects so this is our first tutorial so let's get started from the basics without wasting any time and uh, you can also subscribe to stay tuned for further videos of sky coding and this is our first tutorial means episode one so we will just basically learn about the introduction about sql and uh, uh, what is the database and we will uh, see all of the things from the basic level for the introduction of sql only okay so these are some of the contents of this video that what we are going to do in this introduction session of the sql First of all, we will see that what is SQL. After that, we will see what can SQL do, its applications, and we will see the very important concept that is SQL versus no SQL. And we will see some of the SQL commands. And after that, we will see that what is a database and what is an information. And we will see Excel versus database. And uh, we will also see that MySQL versus SQL, which is a very important. Some people are just confused in these things that uh, what is SQL and what is MySQL is MySQL or SQL same we are having Excel for storing the data then what is the need of SQL and what is the need of database we will cover all of those uh, real time scenarios and some of the questions also we will see okay so let's get started and let's first of all see that what is SQL okay so SQL means a structured query language it is just a programming language which is used to interact with the database okay in the real life what we use in the real life suppose that i want to just convey some message to any person basically we use our human language means english hindi or any language whichever you like you can just use those languages for just conveying the messages for just telling something to another person okay whenever you are learning the computer from the basics then you must be aware about this thing that computer can just understand only 0 1 0 1 means binary values he cannot understand our own human language it, okay so that's why we use 0 1 0 1 uh, for interacting with the uh, interacting with the computer system so in the similar way we use basically sql that is a structured query language to interact with the database for talking with the database that now you have to create the database, delete some data, update some data or select some data, fetch some data from the database. So for that we use SQL. So now comes the second point that is SQL is not a database system but it is a query language. Okay, we will cover this in brief while uh, just seeing the difference between SQL and MySQL. Okay, we will cover this thing in brief but uh, for this time SQL is not a database system. We cannot call SQL as a database system. It is a query language which we use to interact with the database. Okay, so SQL is not a database system, but SQL is a query language which you use to interact with the database. So now the third point is saying that SQL is a domain specific language, and the fourth point says SQL is a declarative language. Okay, so first of all, let's elaborate this third point that is SQL is a domain specific language. What is the meaning of domain specific language? Okay, so basically, domain specific language is a language which is basically used at for uh, some selective areas. Okay, there is a uh, one more language that is a uh, general purpose language. There are basically two languages domain specific language and the general purpose language. General purpose language is used at the multiple areas. You can use that language for the multiple areas. Suppose that you can take an example of C, C, Java, Python. We can use these languages for multiple purposes for multiple areas but we cannot use sql for multiple purposes we can use just sql at some selective areas means we can just use sql at the relational databases only okay where data is present in the tabular form because sql is a language which is basically work on the tabular form of the data okay so sql is a domain specific language because we can use just SQL for some selective areas means on relational databases where data is present in the tables okay in the tabular format but uh, why SQL is not a general purpose language because we cannot use SQL on multiple areas we can use it for some selective areas only as C++ Java Python HTML these are some of the languages which are general purpose programming languages we can use uh, these languages for uh, some multiple areas we can we can create a web uh, we can create a website as if you take an example of the java so java we can use java 
on the snowflake as well we use java for creating functions or procedures or we use basically java or if you take example for python as well we use a python for in the snowflake for just creating functions or the procedures and we use a java in spring boot as well time leaf is a concept of the framework uh spring boot which we use okay so that's a different thing basically sql is a domain specific language which we use for some selective areas means on the relational databases on sql is not a general purpose programming language okay so this is a uh, something which i have to tell you about the domain specific language okay and the fourth one that is the last point is SQL is a declarative language. Okay, so these are some of the uh, features of the SQL which I am telling you that SQL is a domain specific language and SQL is a declarative language. Okay, so what is the meaning of declarative language? Declarative means what to do and procedural means what to do and how to do. Means SQL is a declarative language because in SQL while working with queries, we will work with queries. So suppose that I want to fetch the data from any of the customer table. And suppose that there is a one address column and I want to check my data for that customer who belongs to Delhi. So, okay, so what we will write, we will just simply write select as trip or select first name, last name from a customer table where address is equal to uh, Delhi. So we will just write this command. We will just declare this command in simple English that I want to see the data for the customer, uh, customer who belongs to the Delhi. So we will just write simple query means uh, what to do i want to do whatever i want to do we will just simply write that thing in query format in sql but we will uh, not tell that uh, how it internally works how it uh, how sql internally fetches the data from the database we will not just uh, define that thing in the query so that's why sql is a declarative language and if you talk about the procedural language uh, definition okay so procedural in procedural languages we basically uh, right, we basically tell that uh, what to do and how to do. As C++, Java, Python, we basically write for procedure that uh, how to do. In, suppose that you want to print the time number. Okay, so here you will uh, not just simply uh, write the, some of the commands and some of the program that uh, some of the loops you will not write directly that I want a pilot room number or the factorial of any number or the prime numbers. Here in procedural language, you have to just define also that how you will just calculate the prime number, how you will just calculate the factorial of any number. So you have to just define the full procedure with the loops or the effects and reasons. You have to just write the full procedure or just calculating the prime number or the factorial in the the procedural languages okay so that's why sql is just a declarative language because here we will just define that what to do what i want to do we will not define the complete procedure here in a declarative language we will just say that what to do but in procedure and language we have to also define that what to do but we have to also define that how we have to do that thing so that's uh, uh, about the declarative language and the procedural language okay so these are some of the uh, features of the SQL. Okay, so let's uh, move ahead and let's see that what are the things which SQL can do means a structured query language can do. We have seen lots of features, declarative language, domain specific language. Okay, so now we will see that uh, what SQL can do. Okay, so as this is the first point that first point suggests that SQL can execute queries against the database. It can execute the queries. We will see that in the practicals. And SQL can retrieve data from the database. Suppose that there is a, some data stored in any of the databases. So it will just retrieve the data and it can also insert insert the records to the database. It's, it can update the data. It can delete the rows from the database. It can create new database. Uh, SQL, by using the SQL language, we can create the new tables. We can create the new databases. We can uh, store the data, update the data. We can basically perform the CRUD operations or we can just create any of the functions by using SQL or uh, we can just simply create the store procedures we can create the triggers we can create the views we can set permissions on the tables procedures functions views or the database okay so these are uh, some of the things that what SQL can do means what are the things which you can do to a specific database by using the SQL that is a structured query language okay we will perform all these things practically then you will better understand this thing for the meanwhile, you have to just uh, see that uh, these are the things which we can do by using the SQL on any of the databases, okay? So now let's move ahead and let's see that what are the applications of the SQL, okay? 
so uh, if you talk about the applications okay so uh, we can just perform the CRUD operation by uh, by using the SQL okay so CRUD operation means we can just simply C for create R for read U for update and D for delete as you can see it is written here CRUD is an acronym for create read uh, update and delete statements in SQL okay so we will just see this thing in brief while we will just do the practical then you will better understand this thing CRUD operation okay C for create means you can just create any of the table create any of the schema create any of the database in SQL the R for read or select you can just fetch some of the data based on the conditions you can use the group by clauses and having clause you can just perform some of the queries by putting some of the conditions on the on the data okay so you can just select and fetch the data from the databases okay and you can just update the data up in the database you can just delete some data truncate the table okay so these are some of the uh, applications which we will uh, do while working with the sql okay so these things you will better understand when you will uh, do the practical okay so as we create the crud operation in any of the programming languages means uh, basically if we perform crud by working with the oops means object oriented programming language okay if you if you have learned the java then you must be aware about the crud operation we perform okay create suppose that we have created a one web app for the school management okay so in the school management uh, we basically first of all uh, create a one database and after that we will just insult one student and after that we will just manipulate the data of that student and after that we will delete that data or we will perform some of the CRUD operations okay so CRUD operation is a very important while working with any of the programming languages or any of hopes okay so these are some of the applications we will uh, do uh, these practicals then you will better understand this thing meanwhile just take this that what is CRUD okay so now it's time to define the SQL and no SQL okay so SQL what is SQL and what is no SQL okay so SQL we have defined that SQL is a structured query language. So now let's see that what is no SQL. Okay. So basically SQL comes under the relational database category. Okay. What is a relational database and non-relational database? You must be aware about this thing. Okay. So in the relational database, we have the data in the structured format, in the tabular format, but in the non-relational databases, uh, data is not uh, necessary that it is present in the structured format on the or in the table of formatting, it may present in the same structure data or any type of data we be presenting the non-relational non databases. Okay. So what is SQL? SQL is just a relational database, relational database, but no SQL is a non-relational database. Okay. SQL comes under the relational database category, means structure tabular database category, but no SQL comes under the non-relational database category. Okay. So, uh, that data is stored in tables in the SQL, okay, if you deal with the SQL, if you take SQL as your uh, query language for uh, dealing with the data, so data is stored in the tables, okay, data will be stored in the tables in the structured format, okay, in the relational database, okay, but in the non-relational database or if you talk about the no SQL, so data is stored in the key value pairs, key value pairs, you must be familiar about this key value pairs, means data is stored in the JSON format, means javascript object notation where we have key value pairs or data may be present in the document base or data may be present in the graph databases or wide column stores okay so sql is used by where data is stored in the tabular format as i have already told you but uh, we use no sql uh, for the non-relational databases where data present in the key value pairs okay and uh, if you talk about this uh, the third point that is these databases is have fixed or static or predefined schema but if you will work with the no sql or non-relational databases they have a dynamic schema so what is the uh, meaning of this static fixed or predefined schema and with this dynamic schema okay so let's uh, talk first about the relational databases okay or sql okay so while working with the sql or relational database we have to just uh, define the database uh, define the database and schema as well first of all suppose that i want to create a one table so for that table we have to first of all create the database and after that we have to create a schema okay so here schema is predefined well, uh, static means schema is defined ahead of time means before doing any of the work to that uh, that means sql or any of the relational database we have to just define that schema first means there is predefined schemas while working with the sql or relational database okay but uh, while working with a non-relational database or no SQL, uh, they have a dynamic schema. So what is the meaning of dynamic schema? Okay, there are dynamic schema, 
and there are strict schemas and schema less okay so you can just uh, search on the web about this thing dynamic schema schema less and strict schema okay so by the way in the uh, dynamic schema meaning is that uh, we uh, there is basically no need to define the schema before as uh, while working with the sql we have to just define the schema first then we we can do any work but while working with the no sql or non relational database we don't have to define the schema before okay when the data is inserted updated or removed the database will be just build a schema automatically okay dynamically that these are some of the differences between fixed static or predefined schema and dynamic schema to talk about this static schema it means that we have to just define the schema first before doing work but in dynamic schema we don't have to just specify or create the schema okay these schemas are created dynamically whenever we will perform any of the crud operations okay so this is the thing which happened while working with the non relational databases means no sql okay so no performance with the huge volumes of data in the relational database okay so there is a, a bit low performance with huge volumes of the data but we can easily work with huge volumes of data while uh, dealing with the non relational databases or no sql databases okay <clears throat> so that example of the relational database is for postgresql mysql ms sql server okay and for the uh, talk about the example of non relational databases so you must be uh, familiar about this mongodb cassandra and hbase okay so sql is a relational database and no sql is a non relational database okay so these are some of the differences between a relational database non relational database sql database or non no sql database okay and so that's all about the differences between sql and no sql so let's move ahead and let's see sql commands okay so there are basically mainly three types of sql commands uh, ddl dml and dcl okay so ddl means data definition language uh, means we can just create enter or drop data definition means uh, these are the commands which we basically use for defining the data means defining the database okay Cre means there are create enter drop and there is a, a truncate as a truncate is also a ddl command we truncate we use for are uh, truncating the data of the table okay we use create for creating the data alter for altering some of the things in the table okay so these are some of the ddl commands with data definition language dml dml we use for manipulation as the full form suggests that data manipulation language so dml commands we use we use for manipulating some data present in the table as select insert update or delete okay and if you talk about the dcl that is data control language means this is basically it's some of the uh, there are some of the tcl commands as well means transaction and control programs so you will also learn those things while doing the practicals of this as well okay so meanwhile just uh, keep these things in your mind that what is ddl means data definition language and what are ddl commands and, and dcl is basically data control language uh, which we use for controlling the data as the name suggests strongly okay grant and revoke uh, permission to the user suppose uh, I want to just uh, share my data to some of that uh, other users. Okay, so we basically grant the permission to that user that he can use my data. Yes, okay. And suppose that he has uh, done the work and we have given the permission. After that, we can just revoke the access from that user by using the revoke command. Okay, we will better understand these things when we will do the practical. Okay, so that's all about uh, these SQL commands: DDL, DML, DCL, and DCL commands. Okay, DCL commands is not written in the in my ppt so i forgot that thing you can just uh learn about those things as well for this piece here okay so we will understand that thing better when we will do the practical okay so that's all about this sql commands and now let's move ahead and let's see about what is database and we are just discussing database database from the first slide so what is a database okay so it's a very simple thing if you have taken the decision to learn the sql then you must be familiar about the database that uh, First of all, let's see that what is the data. Okay, so data is something means uh, facts or the information. Okay, so and what is a database? Database is a system that allows the users to store and organize the data. Suppose that you have lots of data, you have lots of information, lots of facts. Then where you will store that in that? If you if you are just storing that data in your in your bag or in some Almira, so it will not be in the structured format. And suppose that you have stored the all of the data in your bank okay we suppose that in the physical format you have some on the files okay so you have stored that in your bank then suppose that you, you uh, there is a requirement to check some uh, particular document then how you will check that it will uh, just consume lot of time when you will search for that data 
so for that there is a database okay so in the database it, uh, we store the data in the and organize the data okay we store the data in the structured format and we basically organize the data data is stored in the structured format in the database okay as you know if you talk about the sql and and my sql so in the my sql data is stored in any of the database data is stored in the tabular format so that we can just use the sql for this searching the data sorting the data so that we can fetch the data easily okay that's why data is stored in the database in the organized format okay so that's a simple definition about the database so everyone knows about the data is that uh, you know the users store and organize the data okay so that's a uh, database and if you talk about the information so information is just a simple thing it's uh, basically the facts or you can say structured data okay so this is basic the definition about the database okay so now let's see about the big difference between excel so now let's see the difference between excel versus database okay which is a very important uh, here we are having the excel for storing the data for uh, if you have uh, in the banks or any of the data entry we use basically excel for storing the data then i uh, if i am already having a one thing that is excel then what is the mean for the database okay and what is the need for that sql language and the need for sql language is just a simple that uh, if we have the database then we must have something to interact with that database so that's why sql came into the picture and that is the structured by language okay so what is an excel so excel is easy to use and uh, any of the person can use untrained person can also work on the excel but if you want to work with the database then there is some training required okay that's a simple thing and data is stored less data we we basically store we can store this the less data in the excel we cannot store the large and big data in the excel but we can store the big data in the databases okay stores large amount of data okay and excel is good for one time analysis or quick charts okay suppose that you want to just an analyze some data suppose that there is a one analyst team and he wants to analyze the market requirements of anything of any product so we can just uh, check that data means he can just uh, uh, fetch some data from the excel and it will be just a bit difficult to analyze the data while using the excel okay so it is just good for a one time analysis only but if you want to just uh, do analysis continuously on a, a repeated interval of time then you have to use the database because in the databases we can just automate the task okay as if you have learned about the snowflake as it is a data cloud uh, platform right so we can just automate that task okay we can use the task feature time travel feature we can use the chrome method for this in the task and we use basically steam this so i guess that's not a different thing if you want to learn the snowflake then you can just uh, visit the description box for that snowflake full course playlist okay so in the databases we can automate the task okay means uh we don't have to just perform the similar thing manually suppose that there is a need insert the data uh, on the regular basis to any of the table then we will just simply just uh, automate a task for that work so that we don't have to just perform the insert query inserting the data or, or manually okay so that's why we will basically database okay so that we can automate the task okay and in the excel low data integrity due to manual operation and high data integrity okay? so data integrity means that uh, accuracy redundancy and can consistency okay so in the excel there is no accuracy of the data redundancy and there is no consistency of the data because uh, we basically don't use any of the sql commands we cannot uh, uh, define any of the uh, functions in in excel while working with excel but while working with the database there is a high data integrity there is a uh, accuracy there is a consistency while working with the database because we be we will use uh, various commands in the databases okay and uh, basically we create the functions procedures and triggers in the databases suppose that anything happen to that database where a trigger is scheduled so that trigger will also just to their work okay so we will understand that thing when we will do the practical about functions triggers and procedures that's a very important concept okay and while working with the excel we have no search filter capabilities but while working with the database we have highly uh, searching and filter capabilities and we basically do the sorting in the databases right so these are some of the differences between excel and the databases okay so that's a simple thing you must be aware of all these things but i also tried my best to 
so that you can understand about the differences between these things okay so let's uh, move ahead now and let's understand about sql database that what are sql databases okay where we can use the sql language means a structured query language on which databases we can use sql for just interacting with the database okay so you can use sql for the data data database amazon rds database sql database that is uh, snowflake here uh, snowflake example is also again. snowflake is just a data cloud platform in snowflake basically you can use the sql as your language for writing functions processors or you can use python scala as well okay and you sap sap s4 hana oracle ibm mysql server microsoft server and PostgreSQL, you can use SQL, okay, in these database, okay, so these are some of the SQL database, so there are some examples given, right, so now let's understand the very important thing that is SQL versus MySQL, which is a very important concept, okay, so let's understand about this thing, and after that we will end up this session, right, so for understanding this SQL and MySQL, let's now move to the web, and I have written some of the notes, right, so let's move there and let's understand about those things okay so these are some of the differences given here about mysql and sql right so as i have already told you about sql sql is a programming language it means a structured query language which we basically use to interact with the database right and mysql mysql is the open source database available in the market you can use mysql you can say MySQL is a database, open source database, you can use to store the data. But SQL, SQL is a query language. Some people are confused in this thing that what is MySQL and SQL. So these two things are different, MySQL and SQL. MySQL and SQL is a completely different thing. MySQL is a open source database available in the market, which is basically developed by Swedish company MySQL AB, which is written here, right? And SQL, SQL is a structured query language, which we use for managing our relational databases, right? So this is the definition about MySQL and SQL. If someone is asking you about the differences between MySQL and SQL, so you can just define these things, right? So MySQL is a database, but SQL is a structured query language which we use to interact with our uh, relational databases, right? And what is the purpose for MySQL is used for data handling, storing, deleting, and updating the data in the tabular form, but it is used to query and operate on the database as it is just a programming language, okay? But MySQL, MySQL is just a software we download from the internet and we install in our system. So it is just a software which is used for handling, storing, deleting and updating data in the tabular form, right? So these are some of the updates. Updates, MySQL is software, so it's a frequent updation, but SQL is a programming language. That's why it does not get any updates. Okay, its commands or streams are fixed and remains the same, okay? As if you take example of Java, right? So Java, Java is a programming language, but Eclipse, Eclipse is an IDE, which we basically download from the internet and we install in our system. So we Eclipse, Eclipse is an IDE, but Java, Java is a programming language, which we use Java for, uh, we, we use Java and Eclipse for writing any of the codes, right? So Eclipse is a, is a IDE, which is a, you can say it's an editor, but Java is a programming language, right? So these are about updates and for the if you talk about type so it is a database software that uses sql language to conduct with the database it is a query program query language right so as i have already told you about this thing that mysql is a database which you download from the internet but sql is a query language okay if you talk about complexity so it is easy to use through simple downloading and installation it requires learning sql as it is a programming language so we basically uh we have to learn that language right and MySQL, MySQL is a relational database management system for managing relational databases. And we use basically SQL commands or statements for various uh, DBMS or RDMS. MySQL is, itself uses SQL commands, right? And support for connectors, so it, it provides MySQL work and tool to design and develop databases. There are no connectors available in SQL, right? So these are the differences here, okay? And this is for multi-language. It is available only in English language. It is available in different languages, means as well. And if you talk about flexibility, so it does not provide support for XML and user-defined functions, but it includes support for XML and user-defined functions. That is SQL. And community support is free to use, and it has very rich community support. It does not have excellent community support. If you find any problem, we need to go to the support. Okay. So that's a different thing. And if you talk about the advantage, 
so uh, that my sql is open source it has a data security my sql has high performance it has data security complete workflow controls and if you talk about the sql so sql advantage is we basically use normal english for interacting with the uh, that database right so no need of coding high speed portability multiple views of data interacted and in, right so these are the differences about mysql and sql okay so that's all about the differences between mysql and uh, sql so the overall the thing is that mysql is just a software which we download from the internet and it is a rdb in a software which is basically used to store update and delete data in the tabular format but sql is a, just a programming language which we use to interact with our relational databases right so these are the differences between mysql and sql there is a big advantage of using sql is that anyone can learn sql because we basically use our own language it means we use uh, english language for just uh, interacting with the databases uh, we will understand better this thing when we will do the practical we use basically english only for this uh, writing the queries okay so it is a very simple to learn anyone can learn if you are not from the it background then also you can learn as well this is a very simple programming language that is as given right so these are about the differences and this is all about the introduction session about the sql and from the next session we will start the practicals we will learn uh, the things and we will do the practical okay so that's all for today's session meet you soon in the next very interesting tutorial that is episode 2 so thank you coders for watching this video and if you feel this important so you can just subscribe to get updates for our upcoming videos so that's all for today's session